I'm Mike. And I'm Jay. Welcome to Retro Gaming Memories Part 2. And this time we're playing Super Mario Brothers 3. <laughs> Watch out for the mushroom, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. Jimmy. So, you know, we thought it was kind of weird that we're talking about retro gaming. And we're playing Diablo 3. Yeah, then I realized, why don't we just play some retro games? So, I think where we left off, we were talking about... You are talking about your Sega Master System. I was talking about my Atari, and then we're like, we're gonna talk about the NES. So what game should we show? And we said <laughs> Mario 3. Well, we didn't, we didn't talk about this. I think we got to your Commodore story, yep. your Atari story, and then we said next episode, we would talk about the classic yes. Nintendo Entertainment System. Yes, and you revealed that you didn't have, you didn't actually own yeah, Nintendo. Which and is crazy. If you guys haven't already, remember to like the video, and if you're new to us, please subscribe. Because we want to stick, we want you to stick around. It helps uh, stick all over me. Yep. Yeah. So it helps grow our channel. So this is one of my favorite Mario games. I, I think I said uh, Super uh, Super Mario Galaxy Two. Yep. And this one is my favorite. Now, one. when was the first time you heard about it? Because I know when was the first time I heard about Mario Three. Yeah. When when did you know about it? Well, In... sh should I tell my story how I got my NES? Yes. Okay, we'll start. I'll just quickly tell it. Okay, you you tell the story. I wanted, I wanted it so bad. That's all I could think about. I already had my Commodore. I had my Atari. But all of my other friends, the cool kids. Yeah. Like you. Yeah. No, not you. You didn't have it. We're playing Nintendo. What? And, you know, and I saw the commercials. The power is in your hands. Remember that? The power is in your hands. Something about that resonated with me. So, I guess, you know, I need the power. I have uh, low self-confidence and I need oh, I more know. power even when I was a kid you could see this so I go I have to have that so every day I'd come home from school and I ask my mom do I have enough money do I have enough money because I had an allowance I did chores so by the way I'm using a ps3 controller that's sticky weird yeah. sorry about that so uh, I bought so we had something in Barrie in uh, Ontario Canada called uh, <laughs> The consumer shopper, where you would go into the store, where you give a number from a catalog, and they go in the back and they get it. Yeah, it was and very I, weird. Yeah, and I it was like I remember NES was like three four seven eight nine two, and I remember I like had it, I remembered it by heart. And so I went into the store when I got the money, and I, I said the number, and I just couldn't get the Nintendo fast enough. And I remember on the car ride there, uh, my parents are like teasing me saying saying you know what they, they might be out of stock of the, the nintendo they you know, might be the, out of stock yeah that was a bunch of assholes yeah i think it was my mother but when i got it i came with a uh, duck hunt and super mario brothers one the first one and uh me and my brother we rented a mickey mouse game because it was a two-player game and we had fun by the way i always hated these levels yeah where the screen pushes you oh yeah always drove me nuts the ultimate parkour so so uh, you brought it home. I brought it home, and even though the Mickey Mouse game wasn't so great, I couldn't stop playing it. And the Mario one, and I did you beat it? Uh, I don't think I did. I think I had to return it. And uh, yeah, the Duck Hunt. I just couldn't stop playing the Duck Hunt, and I could never figure out how it worked. The light gun, because I was a kid, it was dumb. Uh -huh. But yeah, but this is once this came out. Oh, oh, oh seizure Mario. I remember Mario 2, it was like, hey, Mario was on like a huge acid trip. Like, it was just weird. Like, it was from another world. And it, 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 uh, yeah, that was a, that's a whole different story. Yeah, uh, but this one had to be my favorite. But how did I find out about this one? Oh. It's just, uh, I just remember literally seeing the cover with the raccoon tail. I think I saw it in stores. Look. That's how, what happened? Using a PS3 controller. Oh, it's weird. You want me to play now so you can talk? Yep. Okay. So, that's how you got yours. Yeah. Um. It's kind of a weird story. Pick a box. I can't remember how I got the Super. Uh, sorry, the Nintendo. Well, you but said I know. I you said, said you didn't never... have one, but I thought about it because we recorded this twice, and I said in the first time I didn't have one. Yeah. But I went home and thought about it, and I do remember getting. Cried. <laughs> what did I have it? No, my dad gave me eighty dollars to get a Castlevania game. Okay, but you didn't have. No, Nintendo? but I did have it. Oh, okay. But I don't. I don't have any memory of getting it. 
So you I black, don't know. You're so excited yeah. you blacked out. Basically, I don't know if it was a birthday, if it was a Christmas. Guaranteed it was a Christmas or a birthday. A because, birth defect. Yeah, birth defect where I can't put my hands over my head like perfectly. Yeah. But I do remember certain memories of having... Oh, this is fun. Sorry. The right. Oh, that's good. I, I do remember getting the first arcade stick with turbo on it. Mm -hmm. Remember? And you push the button and it would do, it would do this. What well, it do? wouldn't do that. Yeah, but that was weird. It would, it would actually, um, it was like rapid fire. Remember that? Yeah, okay. I remember that because I remember playing fighting games and p putting it on and just being like, pfft, punching. Yeah. But going back to my Nintendo memories, I lived in a building in Barrie and the landlord of the building, he had a daughter, two daughters, and he's very religious. Oh, man. I don't like where this is going. Very religious man. Oh god. And her name was Shelly, and his name was uh, his name was Dwayne. Sounds like a made up name, but that's true. Yep. Shelly and Dwayne. Yep. And I remember her because I had a cr ah. I think I had a crush in her back then. And he bought the system for his kids. And get this. He knew I wanted one so bad, the they, controller. Yeah. That he's the guy that he knocked on the door one day and he gave it to me. Bought me one. What? Yeah. That was, was a nice man. Yeah, it was nice. You must have really bugged the shit out of him. No, I didn't. He, he, like, took me fishing, touched me down there, everything. <laughs> it's getting weird. So all of that stuff. But <laughs> going back and thinking about this, I, I remember just brief brief moments. Yeah. Because that was so long ago. I don't know how you remember much. I mean, I remember <laughs> going, well, much of the memories. Yeah. I remember the day that Mario 3 came out. That's a good Do story. Do you remember that the original NES it was actually a different color than we remember? It was, like, a very... Uh, light gray, but now you look at them now, it's like this brownie gray. Well, because they age so much. No, it's because the well, yeah, the, the plastic, plastic. Uh, that they use on them. But basically, what happened was this: I was in grade two. I remember this because this came out in '88. That's 88. insane. '88. That's insane. That you can't even comprehend that. So I was. That's when the wizard came out. That was yeah. The wizard, yeah, before. Um. <coughs> oh, <coughs> I'm gonna oh. die. I'm gonna die. But no, I do remember watching The Wizard and seeing the very first world premiere footage of this game. Yeah. And that blew my mind. I remember we watched as, like, as, as a bunch of friends were over. I missed the guy. And we had mushroom. popcorn. And we were like, oh, watching yeah. The Wizard. But my personal experience with playing the game was the day it came into the rental shop, I was yeah. at school, grade two. And in, during lunch, they had something called Pizza Days. Oh, I remember. But they also had something called sort of snack days as well, and they would bring a basket of snacks, and oh, you, you give like. You're sorry, horrible. I just keep missing the mushroom. They would give you like fifty cents, your parents, and you go to school. What? Where's the whistle? Was the whistle here? Yeah, it's way up there. You gotta fly. So I can't get it. No. So, basically, at school, you get these these little treats for fifty cents. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at the treat basket going, oh, and going in the hall to get my change. And as I went out there, my friend, uh, Darren, he, what's that his name? I forget. I Dwayne. said yesterday. He said Dwayne. Dwayne. Sorry, Dwayne. No, Derry. This is somebody else. Somebody oh. my age. He ran outside and his mother. Naked. Was naked. <laughs> and she sucked him off clean. <laughs> <laughs> no. She had went to the video store for us and actually knew how excited we were about Super Mario 3 because you got to keep in mind anyone watching this if you're under the age of 20 or around there when Mike and I grew up the only way you would learn about a new video game was actually to go to a video game store and see what was there yeah or word of mouth yeah but I mean the only way you would actually find out about games were if your friends were rich they would get like Nintendo Power sent to them and they'd be like, look at this, look at this, look at... And then you'd wait for it. You wouldn't know when it was coming. That was the problem back then. There was no such thing as the internet. There was just stores like um, Microplay. Broccoles. Remember on Cosmo Street? Yeah. So I, I, I remember she came in, brought the thing in, and all of the kids in the class were so excited because obviously it's the new Mario game and no one knew about it. Right. No one knew when it would be there. And... I remember we were, the two of us were so excited that we read the manual about 15 times each, like all the legal notes, everything. And the teacher saw how excited we were. She actually brought us to the front of the class to show it, to show like the the manual. Really? Yeah. 
She was like, show it off, show it. And the kids were like, oh. It was like, it was like. It's a weird classroom you got. No, there. but listen, it's like. <laughs> do you but think, listen. do you think when Halo 4 comes out, the kids that are in grade 2, 3, 4 have the game at school going, oh. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, actually. Okay. Probably more so than back Ever, then. Ever, right? Yeah. But you got to keep in mind, this was the first time video games were in the home. Okay. That was like a, it's sort of an excitement that I can't even really explain. Because okay. I, I can't think about what it's like, because all the kids nowadays, they're used to these graphic games. Right. What the hell's going on here? Go jump out, you idiot. I... Holy shit. It's because you gave us a shitty... Look okay, it. okay. So, we basically rushed home to his house. Didn't tell my mom where I was going. She, If she's watching this, she'll love yeah. this part. Didn't tell her where we were going. Nothing. Got the mushroom. Yeah. Look at you. <laughs> Can't even use it. I can, man. <laughs> Give me this. I got it. No, I got it. I got it. Oh, I got it. Ah. I got it, daddy. But don't you think it's weird? Sorry to interrupt your story, but don't you think it's weird? I remember certain jumps and, like, I remember the whistles are and stuff like that. Well, those are classic moments. But do you think you could, like, pop in, like, Halo 2, like, 15 years from now? Remember where all the skulls are? Yeah. No. See, that's the thing. I don't. This is be we gotta keep in mind. This is the first time that you and I ever played video games. That's not true. Well, I mean, to to this degree. <laughs> Why do you be more specific? Well, I mean, on your your Atari, was there secrets you remember? Uh, no. Okay, it's the. I'm asking you now. Why? Do well, that's you, why does I, our generation remember the no, secrets? No, that's what I'm asking you. <laughs> I, okay, I'll say. That's what I'll I tell you why. And you didn't answer. I'll tell you why. <laughs> why? Because we would go to school. And yeah. there'd be so much chatter about the game. Chitter. Chitter and chatter about the game and the secrets that it oh, was like just basically... Part. Yes, it was basically engraved into our memory. D do you think that's valid? Yeah, sure. And it was part of us growing up. Okay. And I, I literally went to his house, didn't tell my mom, and six hours passed with us <laughs> playing two-player yeah. that it got dark out. And his mother came and was like, does your mom know where you are? And I yeah, was like, yeah. no. My mom's dead! Cry. Yeah. I ran home, yeah, and I'll never forget it because my mom saw me, yelled at the window something I can't say again. Yeah, or, I love you. you no, know, our child services will take me away. Oh. Brush your teeth. And she literally hopped the curb in her car, big Cadillac boat, screeched across the grass, and basically jumped out as it was moving to basically yell at me, but hug me and love me. That's how excited. Look Weird. at you. I'm trying to figure out how to fly again. Oh my god. Look at this. And... <laughs> <laughs> you pressured me! You so, stopped talking! There. That's my story about Super Mario uh, 3. What other great games are on the NES? Oh, pff, everything. No, but like, I love Paperboy. I love Excitebike. See, I love Battletoads. But I think we the, the point of these videos, for me at least, is to try to explain to them, like, you know, they play these games, and obviously they're not the best graphical games. Yeah, they are. Look at them. What is this? The Unreal 3 engine? Look what I did. Yeah. My point being is, we I think why we remember this too is because we had to actually use our imaginations. Yeah, but... My, not everything was on the I, screen what I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to, to pinpoint here is why do I remember this game supposed to... Because this was probably uh, the biggest game of all time. Well, like, maybe, that, I guess. At that time, period. But, like... I, I, I guess you could say I do remember things in E.T. and Asteroids and like, you know, Pac-Man and stuff like that. But this is where video games had more of a complexity to it. Holy shit. Like there's these little mini games like the card flip that we just this. did. Yeah, this one. It's This was like when a video game said, you know, like a video game has to be like this. You have to have, you have like certain levels and stuff. And all of a sudden this game, it's like, oh, here's a map. There's yeah. this. There's this. There's little games within games within games. It definitely wasn't the first game to introduce an overhead bird's eye view of a map, like a world, but... First time I saw it, though. Yes. It was definitely the first time I think we both saw anything like it. And I think that it, it opened the doors for basically platformers everywhere. Yeah. This made platformers popular. Obviously, Super Mario 1 and 2 attempted to do that. And obviously, the first Mario is legendary, but... Never heard of it. This game here is this is a this is like 
this is our generation's what? What would you say? Our generation's what? How John we, John Lennon? The no, Beatles? I mean, it, I mean in video games terms. Well, video game way, terms. What is this? This is our, our Call Halo. of Duty. Uh, yeah, I guess. Franchise. I guess or a Halo. Yeah. I don't know which one's bigger. Ooh, that's a debate. And I, I, I guess the, Call of Duty. I think the other thing is Mario at the time was. There's a moth right there. Look at that. Another moth. I, I, I remember, oh, by the way, that, that guy, he's a dog. Oh, yeah, he's got a black eye. But it's very hard to pinpoint where we're trying to pinpoint here. We're trying to explain why I why you or I remember certain things in these games. I'm not just talking about Super Mario 3. I'm talking about Battletoads. I'm talking about Paperboy, little secrets and stuff like that. Like, remember, is it because this is when, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is this when games just got really... There was a huge leap? It wasn't really a leap, was it? Mm, well, between the Sega Master System, which we talked previously in this... And the Atari. And I the mean, uh, the Sega Master System looks... Uh, it's, it's not as good as this. Definitely mm -hmm. didn't have the graphic horsepower, but it's not way off. So it's not like we're talking about a super yeah. Nintendo game versus a Nintendo game. I think it's just... It was kind of a leap, though, because... It was just like, you know, Atari was like just like lines of resolution and stuff like that. And I think I remember explaining to my dad, I'm like, Dad, I could finally play with my cartoons. And he looked at me like I was nuts. And he's like, I don't oh, know, this new Nintendo, it's like playing a cartoon. I could play with my cartoons. Well, and, he, and he just, he was, he was like eating his peas and he was like. I think it, it, it kind of, to us, these graphics were amazing. Yeah, they're, they're the cartoon, like Saturday morning cartoon graphics. But you remember as games came out, the, we would say, look at the graphics! Yeah, yeah well, people still do to this but day. But listen to me, for, listen to this for a second. <laughs> look, at the, look at the graphics. Yeah. How did we get drawn in so much thinking these were amazing? Well, and like, yeah. But even like last gen, even like PlayStation graphics. Like, remember when Metal Gear Solid came out? We're like, oh! You look at it now, it's like a big triangle running. Or yeah. like, or remember Final Fantasy VII, the graphics yeah. when they could, just the now. no, but just the pictures of when we were kids, like oh my god, mm -hmm. with the pre-rendered backgrounds, that those were the days too, pre-rendered backgrounds. And they treated Star Fox and the Super Nintendo like it was like the Matrix movies, like it was going to change everything with the FX chip. <laughs> oh, just... you know what we might have to do? What we're gonna have to play that? We will, yeah, or. Uh, Virtual Racer. We'll have to do it. We'll have to do it. You know, Rare made a game. So did you? Were you? Were you waiting for that note? Did you know that note was there? Yeah, of course. That's no, what no. I mean. That's insane. You, well, you know why? Because we played this when we were kids so much that we know where everything is. I guess it's just a lot of hidden things to remember. Like, I know. I think it. My friend Garrett, Punch Out. There's a code that you could play. In, uh, sorry, there's a code that you can punch in and he still knows it to this day and it's a very complicated code it's well, like up down b a b up down left select start well, there's buff, a contra buff, code buff. which is very famous up, yeah. up down down a b a b select start but um but it was At longer that's how i do it well it's longer than that the punch out one and see, he that, still remembers it see that's nuts there's things like that that i, I try to remember yeah but you can't remember our postal code yeah i don't even know what the postal code here is yeah. but I think what we're trying to get at here is it was a different time for video games because a video game back then, if you bought it for eighty dollars, you're a young kid. Games back then, you know, you didn't make as much money. Mm. They were still eighty dollars. So when you bought a game, you had to play that game, mm. and that's all you had. So if if you bought a shitty game, guess what? You're stuck with that shitty game until you get another one. Mm -hmm. It's not like today where you can go on Xbox Live arcade and just like download a game and be playing a brand new one with amazing graphics you have to think of it in terms of i mean I'm, let's try to explain it really quickly of what's something that they have to deal with like that nowadays is there anything or is it just media so what when they have to remember like they remember no, things not forever? Th not remember things but be like no kid nowadays gets stuck with a game unless they're you know because they can go to their friend's house you can go to the corner store and buy a video game now yeah. for cheap. 
my point being is back then we didn't know when the games came out we didn't know when yeah. the release date was we didn't know if you, you could you couldn't trade them in back then at least for what i remember well it's like i guess it's like we don't know when half-life 3 is gonna come out it was like that for every game no oh, <laughs> yeah that's he a did, good way of he did, explaining he it he didn't know anything about it and there's no hints or like you just it, it's out when it's out and it would literally it's show... It's out when yeah. it's out. And it would literally <laughs> just show up in the video store. Oh, when's the game going to be finished? When's Super Mario 4 going to be ready? It will be ready when it's ready. <laughs> exactly. They never... Just like Valve. Half-Life so, 3 yeah. will be ready when it's ready. That's actually a good point to bring up. There's oh. no way to explain it. Yeah. Other but that's than that. the best way, yeah. Imagine having no internet, uh, no friends. <laughs> no, actually, put it this way. Imagine having no internet. Yeah. No magazines, really, yeah. uh, other than Nintendo Power, but Nintendo Power would not show everything. Yeah. Imagine not and having... And it's not like you could get Nintendo Power everywhere. Exactly. No internet, no smartphone, no nothing. I think when we say no internet, that's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no nothing. So imagine uh, living like that. Imagine you didn't know when the next Call of Duty game was coming out. Yeah, well, I could tell you now. November. Yeah, every but year. Just imagine that. So that's the. Or is it I, October? I don't, know. I don't know. That. So I'm. I'm just saying that's when we grew up. That was what we yeah. had to deal with. Mm. So when we were done with this system, and all of a sudden another system made by Sega appeared. Yeah. And it was a follow up to the Master System. That versus the Super Nintendo, that's when things, I think, got really interesting. Yeah. Especially for me, like, in terms of video games, because that's truly when my friends took sides. Genesis people. Yeah. Nintendo people. It was, like, racist. Yeah. It was racism. And that's the true battle. Yeah. That was, like, and not only were the kids and the fans battling, but the companies were battling, too. Mm. So, like, you'd watch, uh, you know, things like... Uh, the Sega system, uh, the Sega Genesis, the ads would say, it can do what Nintendo don't. Ooh. You know what I mean? And Nintendo's were like, Sega. Yeah. They would actually fight each other in the ads. And that was like, that was something new as well. Yeah. Well, there was no video game companies doing that at the time. Yeah. Well, you see Microsoft and Sony do it now. They do it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's still going on to this day. But I think what we're going to do is end this episode. And tomorrow's episode, uh, at 3 o'clock, if I, I'm not mistaken, yep, um, we're going to go to the Super Nintendo and the Genesis and talk about those. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Sounds like fun. We'll see you soon. These look like white turds.